Well, this is the part of the show where I take photographs that you send to me and examine them. Take a look at what the landscape looks like and what it could possibly become. Today we're looking at a house in Madison, Mississippi. It belongs to Karen and Thomas. As you can see, it looks like a relatively new house. Now, Karen says that she loves the English style. She's really sick and tired of these uh, big shrubs here. And you can see the house almost looks like it's floating on a barge of plants. Um, this is Hawthorne. This looks like holly. She doesn't like the holly over here. Um, I'd have to say that this crepe myrtle really blocks the view of what looks to be a fairly handsome portico there. Um, and then this is sort of boring here, and I'm not sure about that corner, but I think we can sure help. So why don't we get started with just a few ideas that I think will add a lot of color, because she mentions that she really likes color. And the other thing that you need to understand is this gets full western sun. So whatever we include here has got to really be able to take some heat. Now, first of all, let's just talk about um, the layout, the balance and so forth here. This, imagine this crepe myrtle gone, but what if we came out here into the lawn here, we came up with another tree here. Maybe that's a crepe myrtle. Maybe we dig that white one up and move it. And then we frame the front of the house with another crepe myrtle here. So then this nice entryway then becomes a focal point. And then what if we come over here and frame the ends of the house, thinking evergreen versus deciduous. These are deciduous, they're gonna lose their leaves, the crepe myrtles. What if we came over here and we did a beautiful vitex tree, maybe a multi-trunk vitex here for blooming just before the crepe myrtles start. And then for spring, what if back here we did a snowball viburnum that comes in back here on the back with those big, giant, white, almost hydrangea-like blooms? And let's do another one right back here. You can see that would be back in this bed over here. All right, so we're balancing the property. Now let's bring in some evergreens. So I'm gonna change colors. I'm gonna to go to green here. And what if we used some Sasanqua camellias right here? How would that, that'd be great. They bloom in the fall, it's evergreen. We could do another Sasanqua here on the corner, there. Another Sasanqua here, and another Sasanqua here on this corner, like that. So see, you get this rhythm going across there with that beautiful camellia. And I would use sort of a blush pink because it would work beautifully with the brick. And then what if we decided to do some roses over this arched window? And maybe that's a new dawn rose with its pale pink. And what if we did another rose over this one, way up like this, where it just fills in. And those will bloom all summer long. You're going to get most of your bloom in the spring, but they'll do very well for you in Mississippi. Now, the next thing I would do is, I agree, I would remove these shrubs along here, and I would anchor it with a really nice boxwood. Remember, our bed shape is going to change. Why don't I change colors here for just a minute and use some yellow? So our bed may change like this, and it may create some sort of serpentine undulating form like this that sweeps around like that, okay? And then what we could do is come back and do a boxwood here and a boxwood here, and then do a boxwood border all the way around like this, using a little boxwood like one of the microphyllas, winter green, something like that. And then on the inside, what you could do, Karen, is here's where we could have a lot of fun with some roses in here, okay? Some of those wonderful pale pink, ever-blooming shrub-type roses all across here, and even a big splash of them here. And then behind the window, there's some dwarf forms of loripetalum. So I'm gonna use some red here just to illustrate that and some Laura Petalum there. It's an evergreen shove, a little bit of Laura Petalum here and here. And then in this courtyard, do something kind of fun and exciting in this space. That could be a simple ground cover. Maybe we do something like Asian Jasmine or Vinca Minor with that little blue flower. And then don't go so large with plants in here. Maybe we just use an Akuba Japonica on the side there, and maybe something the same over here on this side. And there's where you could have some beautiful perennials in here. Maybe we fill that in with a pink colored daylily 
or a whitish colored daylily all in here so you would have a lot of bloom in spring. Well, anyway, there's some ideas that would certainly transform this house. Good luck with your project. You've got a beautiful place.